Uh, okay, we are live. Uh, welcome everyone to this very exciting live stream today with Chinese Cooking Demystified, which I think I'm pointing to here to my left, to my right. Um, Steph and Chris there, and we have got my name is Andong um, with us also. Um, and today we're going to be playing trivia. Um, uh, so before, okay, we are live. Okay. Uh, welcome everyone. Turn off my sound. I always do that. Um, so first, Good let's sound. just go around and um, just introduce everyone's channels real quick. Um, so first off, I am Amy from the channel Blondie in China. Uh, my videos are all about traveling in China. And um, at the moment, uh, Australian kind of content since I'm not able to travel at the moment. Um, so yeah, uh, now we'll move on to uh, Steph and Chris from Chinese Cooking Demystified, if you could um, introduce your channel real quick. Uh, so yeah, we um, cook stuff we <laughs> mystified chinese food i don't know right yeah we uh yeah we cook chinese food uh from china we live uh in china so uh right you know we do what it says on the tin <laughs> right yeah so i guess we we live in uh shunda right which is you know a little bit south of guangzhou right so yeah and oh uh, sorry about like him he will like probably jump <laughs> in like during the thing because he's like very needy so yeah <laughs> otherwise otherwise he might get barky so yeah you know yeah. oh cute oh uh, what's the dog's name again oh uh hayek um hayek. hayek you know like the austrian economist i it's not a political statement i swear it's um you know it's a schnauzer so yeah you know i wanted to choose an austrian economist it's second yeah. favorite <laughs> so Awesome stuff. Um, Andong, um, if you could go ahead and introduce your channel. Yeah, so uh, I like to cook stuff from all over the world and kind of tell the stories behind the food I cook sometimes. And since I've spent a lot of time in China, there's also a lot of Chinese food. And that's kind of the overlap, I think, between all of our channels. Um, but also there's a lot of uh, food from all over the world. I was born in Russia, so there's some Russian food. I live in Germany, grew up in Germany, so there's German food. But then wherever I travel, wherever my travels take me, that's what I cook. <laughs> awesome. Well, yeah, if you guys don't already follow Chinese Cooking Demystified or My Name is Andong, please go ahead and do that right now because they have some of the most awesome content out there on YouTube about cooking. Um, some, of course, very awesome Chinese cooking content. So, yeah, so happy to have you guys here and have us all in one place to go live together. Um, I'm really excited for this. Um, mm -hmm. So I thought to start off, maybe we could go around and just talk about what life has been like for us in the last few months in these crazy times at the moment. Um, so I don't know, Jeff and Chris, um, would you like to run us through what life is like there in Shunda for you at the moment? Sure. Uh, right, so I guess we'll be the first to introduce our life, I guess. Uh, yeah. So, right, we have a, uh, we actually took some pictures. We make a PowerPoint. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. So. Um, not nothing to, is this one, is it, is it on? Yeah, uh, we can we can, find it out. we can sort it over. Yeah, so right. So while Chris is looking for the stuff uh, for the pictures, I so life in China is basically like back to normal. Uh, we live in a low risk area. Like there are three categories like of like risk. Uh, so this are like the street. Is it sharing? Uh, oh, I, I have don't know. I have to add it to the stream. That's my job. Oh, I see. I see. Okay. Oh, wow. So is that Chunda there that we can see? Uh, yeah, yeah. This is the street. Uh, I just took the pictures yesterday. So life is basically like back to normal. And most of the country, besides like a couple cities that had like recent small, like a small cluster in communities, yeah. um, most of the country is like, like normal. When you're walking on the street, you don't need to wear a mask. Uh, you only need to wear a mask when you are in more like closed areas or like yeah. elevators or like uh, theaters, this kind of things. You can go out and eat. Um, yeah, so it's basically like, you know, especially like now, because I think it, when was it like that the, um, you know, the risk was lowered where um, you didn't have to wear like masks outside there's still a lot of people wearing masks right i mean yeah. 
Yeah, also, so, so this is a uh, kind of a street food, like snack shop downstairs that sells like the uh, beef organ stew kind of thing. And they also sells like herbal tea. Um, yeah, so this is like, yeah, life now. It's during season. Oh, amazing. The best time of the year. Yeah, so, right, this is basically what life is now. Um, yeah, I would say mostly getting back to normal. Oh, this is our neighborhood uh, bar that's oh. like in that little yellow house. Yeah. Um, especially during when we're testing Lamia, it's like very stressful and tired. <laughs> and at night, we'll go there and play chess. And, oh, yeah. So, yeah, it's basically like, you know, how to say, because we, I think, um, you know, ended up, uh, you know, kind of in lockdown a lot earlier than the rest of the world, right? So start earlier and end yeah. earlier. So, you know, it's, uh, yeah, we're basically what, like two months ahead of you guys, I guess. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so right, hang in there. Things will be Yay. fine soon. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. Um, and do you want to go ahead and share with us what life is like for you right now in Germany? What is life uh, like for me right now in Germany? So, um, yeah, sure, I can I can share that. Um, trying to find the button. So I I do not have pictures of the street because actually the street just looks like uh, it. Pre everything pretty much looks normal, <laughs> yeah. um, and things are also starting to get back to normal. There, the, the usual queues everywhere and stuff like that. So for me, I can uh, I decided to share with you what I've been up to in the past few uh, weeks while I was on lockdown because Amazing. that time is just over. Like we're getting back to normalcy, but I was yeah. busy with a few things, and I'll show you. Hold on, let me pull that up. And now let me use the magic of technology to share with you what I am seeing. Uh, hold on. Ooh, I'm so I'm so new. Like I'm I'm a tech dinosaur. I feel. Don't stress. Um, this is all very new to me as well. Absolutely loving the live streaming scene. It's so much fun to like get together with everyone. But, yeah. Ooh, I've seen your. Here we go. Yeah. So I'm ready to share what I did. So one of the things I've been doing is I've been playing around with a complex sourdough. And by that, I mean, like most people always try to make these like big and round and puffy, uh, very beautiful looking loaves, which I love. I've tried to make those. Uh, but I've been getting into like what you see on this picture here, which is more of like um, like a yeah. square shaped bread. You know, like it, this is like a German Scandinavian thing. So Smörebröd uh, in like uh, Denmark and Sweden, I think it's something like this. So. This direction yeah. is like, it's so much easier to bake this bread because you kind of forget about all the, the crap that has to do with shaping and all the folds all day long and stuff like that. You pretty much just focus on like the proper time and the proper stuff that goes inside. And shaping is like with a, because you use a cake loaf, uh, what is that, like a loaf loaf pan yeah. to, to bake that. So that's that's what we've uh, what I've been playing around with. It's, it's amazing. Like you don't care about gluten. You can put all the flowers you want the, all the crazy stuff and oats and seeds. So yeah, that's one thing I've been enjoying in quarantine. So that's my quarantine sourdough. Love it. And the second thing is I've been uh, studying Korean because oh. my my oh. goal was originally to 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 travel to to pick up some Korean and to travel to Korea by the end of the year and then do like a whole series on Korean food. Uh, I don't oh, think that's happening yeah. this year. <laughs> I don't know. I think like traveling to Asia should be fine though. Like as long as they allow you to go in, like I yeah. Think... I mean that's the big that's the big question, right? You know. Yeah. So we'll, we'll see when foreigners can actually come back into China. Like exactly. Theoretically, I could leave, but then I could not get back, back in. <laughs> yeah, I could come back. So yeah. Yeah, I think it will be legal for me to travel to Asia, but you know, I have a YouTube channel. People are watching, and I think it might be a little bit of a weird message to send out to people if I'm like traveling really early and like showing everybody like hey look it's cool to travel not sure like I have to do more thinking before I do that type of thing yeah. so yeah so but I'm still like I can still use the time to learn Korean because then if I no matter when I go if it's later this year or early next year or whatever I'll probably yeah. be at least somewhat conversational I hope in Korean and I think traveling is just a million times more fun when you speak the language and I'm sure Amy yeah. can Tell us all about that. <laughs> yeah, sure. 
Yeah, and then the last thing, and then the last thing I wanted to show you is I've been rediscovering <laughs> alcoholic beverages. <laughs> Me too. Uh, and and by that I mean um, I can actually go. Um, but what, what I mean by that is that you know, like I'm not a huge drinker at all, and when I drink, I usually it's like I like to enjoy a couple of good beers. But uh, more recently, it's because I've been uh, working on a collab with a Baijiu uh, brand, and they've gotten me into into like making drinks because they're they're trying to to market Baijiu abroad, so to the world because nobody outside of China drinks their stuff, mm -hmm. and they're working on that. And they came up with a lot of cool like long drink and cocktail recipes based on Baijiu, and I I was very surprised by how good this tastes and how much fun it is. To make these things, so I'm I'm afraid I opened Pandora's box here, okay. and now I will be making a lot of drinks. <laughs> I feel like though with uh with Baijiu, right? Like I almost feel like making like a fancy cocktail. It almost like you know the Baijiu loses its soul somehow in the process, you know, <laughs> right? Like there's some of that, you know, yeah. Yeah, like you you need to have like you know um you know four quai a little thing of like arguato or something. You know, a little bit, <laughs> well, a little bit of self-hatred, you know, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that, oh. that's kind of what, what, I've been, what I've been doing. Sounds awesome. Yeah. Sounds like you've been very productive in this, uh, in this lockdown period. Always. How about you, Amy? <laughs> oh, okay. I will share my screen with you guys. Let's see if I can. Wow, it's it. so weird. We all have these things prepared. Whoa. <laughs> oh, it's like we find this. Um, okay, is this coming up for you guys? There, there we go. That's my beautiful mom. I thought you guys would appreciate this. So um, last, last weekend uh, was my birthday and mom asked me, uh, what do you want me to make for you? I'll make you anything you want for your birthday dinner. And recently I've really been craving the Dongbei Guo Bao Rou. Uh, the, you know, yeah, I was the, thinking that's what it looked like, yeah. It was her first ever attempt making it and she did an absolutely fantastic job. It was so, so good and it, it was wow. the best thing. Um, that's a wow. close up of it. it. She even like deep fried it twice. She did she did all the steps and she um she's a dentist and her nurse is actually from Harbin. And um so when mom was planning to make this dish, um she asked her nurse for all of the tips about how to make it correctly. Um and yeah, it was so good. Um, so what else have I been doing? My girlfriend uh, took me out for a birthday picnic because restrictions are easing slightly now in Sydney and you can have groups of up to 10, uh, 10 people outside um, gathering. Um, so we had the four of us and had a little picnic um, by the Sydney Harbour, which was awesome. Uh, so good to see life is kind of like going back to normal. Um, I've also been having a lot of uh, dog time, uh, time with me and my dog. My dog is... Uh, <laughs> obsessed with me at the moment because my sister just drove back to Melbourne. Um, she was with us for the last two months. And I think my dog is trying to make me stay by showing me more love than she usually does because she's probably scared that I'm going to run off at some point too. So she's been staying particularly close to me these days and it's so, so cute. <laughs> so I know like when you when you went back like from Germany to yeah. like Australia, you were, you were telling us that like, you had to do some kind of like quarantine in your house, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Did was like the dog in your room or was the dog like elsewhere? And did that drive the dog crazy if it was elsewhere? No. So basically, my dog she really gives me the cold shoulder when any any time I come home because she's like, "Oh, you've been away for so long. I'm not going to get too close to you because I don't want to miss you again." Um. So for the first couple of weeks, she did not come near me at all, and I don't know whether it was like pack mentality. My parents weren't going near me, so the dog didn't go near me. So. I had zero contact with the dog, almost zero contact with the dog for the first um, two weeks that I was back. And now I've been back two months. She's finally warming up to me again. And you know, she's sleeping with me sometimes and she's crawling all over me. She's adorable. Um, so that's a, that's a really nice uh, plus side of quarantine and lockdown. My dog loves me again. Um, and I've been doing a lot of hiking. Um, we found some really cool hiking trails near my house. Uh, this is one that we discovered a few days ago. And we literally walk um, five minutes from my house and we're in the middle of the bush, which is a very nice plus side of being in Australia. We have a lot of bushland. And so this track we could be on for like two hours and we had a lovely little hike. Um, but yeah, that's essentially uh, what I have been up to. Um, yeah. 
You have no idea how blessed you are with all of that amazing nature in Australia. Yeah, hundred percent. I'm really, really lucky. Um, I'm lucky to live in Australia. That's for sure. Um, mm. I, uh, finally also getting back to normal and yeah it'll be nice to actually just enjoy my home country for a few months or maybe more who knows how long this uh lockdown and no travel period will be extended for but yeah just playing it by ear at this stage and uh seeing how things go yeah i mean like i think like um you know my brother in the u.s right you know it's just so different than it was here because he was like yeah you know um, they haven't really been able to like, go outside for a while. They're in Pennsylvania. Uh, but at the same time, he's like, well, you know, I can at least, uh, you know, slap on some running shoes and just like go yeah. running down side roads. Right. And it's just like, yeah. yeah, that's like the exact opposite of like what we had available. Like, I feel like lockdown here was a little bit less intense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, just because it didn't. Yeah. Yeah. It was like a little bit less serious. Right. So like it didn't last as long either. Yeah. So here the most serious one was like kind of three, two to three weeks. Um, yeah. Where like everything's closed. Uh, mostly like basically everybody's staying outside, uh, not outside, inside. Uh, only like markets and supermarkets are open. But then like uh, you mostly do deliveries. Um and even if you're going to supermarkets, like everybody's like all protection, like wear like full <laughs> stuff. Has right. that suit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. So, but then like after three weeks, it's basically kind of starting to ease because people are going back to work. Um, and the I think like also starting from that point, the case is starting to drop. Uh, yeah, we actually like have like the shorter like really strict lockdown but then like after that it's just you're still like being more careful kind of thing and starting from april things are kind of basically get back to normal and like now in may it's just besides wear masks so, yeah i mean like i still wear a mask outside yeah, especially yeah. like as a foreigner here right i'm gonna be the absolute like last person to take off the mask you know yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I thought maybe we could talk about how we all met um, because we've all met, most of us have met everyone, but we've never been together in like one room together before. But how did so Andong and Steph and Chris, how did you guys all meet? Yeah. I mean, like. In Steph and Chris's comment early. section. Very early. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You were an early commenter, right? So it was just like, <laughs> you know, we just kind of like shoot the shit on the channel, right? Yeah. You know, the yeah. Comment. Yeah, I mean, I, I was like, I was uh, very happy to find your channel. It was like back when I started to think uh, about think like I started thinking about making my own channel, and uh, I looked at what type of like Chinese food content was out there, and I knew from before that there were some channels, but I wasn't like ever like super happy with like one, and then I found yours, and I was like, okay, that's it, because like in the beginning I was thinking I like, should should I just make a pure Chinese cooking channel, and I found yours, and I'm like it's already there and <laughs> you're doing the best job possible so so yeah and then that's why i stuck around in the comments and had a lot of fun nerding out about various things and ingredients that nobody yeah, else well, would talk was, to me about it was like the jianbing right that was, yeah. where it was like yeah. yeah then because like we did like this really like intense jianbing like we always do where it's like you know okay like we need to make like I mean, I guess we weren't doing the Tianjin version, but anyway, right? You know, we were, we wanted to make it like you know as close to like what you would get like on the street, right? And yeah. then um, yeah, then you had a really good video that was like, okay, I'm gonna take that and make it so that people can actually make it, you know? Yeah, yeah, that that's kind of a lot of what I do on my channel because I don't even it would be absurd for me to try to make like hyper authentic versions of everything. I don't have the access and I don't have the knowledge. So I think my role is really in uh, trying to simplify things down, kind of be on the tracks of the authentic original, but make it accessible to people wherever they are. Awesome. Oh, cool. Yeah. So that's your um, meeting story. And then I met um, Steph and Chris last year um, when I went, I was in Shenzhen and um, we got in touch and um, we made a video together, right guys? <laughs> Right. Yeah. yeah, the market video. It's yeah, it's pretty good. I like that video a lot. 
It was really fun. Um, Chris and Steph took me to their local market and we got ingredients to make a meal back at their place and that was super, super fun. And then Andong and I, we met not two months ago back in Germany or maybe three months ago um, and things worked out really well and um, I was going to Berlin and thought it would be great if I could meet up with Andong while I was there and Andong gave me some tips about um, how to do some Chinese cooking with uh, German supermarket ingredients. <laughs> Sometimes works and sometimes doesn't. <laughs> yeah, like when I look back at the results, there's, um, I, I don't think they were super authentic, but, you know, it was edible food. Um, but, yeah, happy to be back in Australia with my easy access to Asian ingredients. <laughs> Take something in, yeah, mini schnauzer. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, this is mini schnauzer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Your doc is overtaking the live stream. Yeah, no, he's, he's very annoying. Like keep pawing. If like it, I don't know when we're like both sitting in front of the computer and like talking to the computer, he just like has to come up here. Yeah, right. <laughs> maybe maybe you can maybe you can go back over there. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> annoying. Um, did this whole situation at the moment, like with, you know, lockdown and the virus stuff, did it uh, um, impact the way that you guys are making your content at all? Like, I know you can make your content from home, but what kind of challenges did you face in the last few months? Um, Steph and Chris, maybe we start with you. Yeah, I mean, it was basically, there's just... You can't really test uh, complicated recipes. Yeah, that was the very first kind yeah, of like. Yeah, the very first couple of weeks, especially like. Um, yeah. Because all the shops were shut down, not shut down, closed. Uh, the Taobao, like buying things online are much slower. Yeah. Um, you can like really, oh, I want to make Sichuan food or uh, or some something that needs some specific ingredients that we'll need to buy either online or at the market. Uh, so yeah. you don't really have too much options. You can only stick to uh, simpler things. So that's why yeah. we did the mantou, the steamed yeah, buns. The mantou and then also the, the chili, chili chips because like the... we have a bunch of dry <laughs> So. And actually, Andong, I saw you post a photo on your Instagram story yesterday or today yeah. um, and a big bag of dried chili. Can you give us a spoiler alert while what that is about or is it top secret? Oh, it's not top secret. Um, it's I'm starting a journey into Sichuan food, which oh. again has... Has to do. It has to do with the aforementioned um, uh, Baijiu brand that uh, I'm working together with. They're from Sichuan, so I'm making like a series into about Sichuan food. Um, I'm getting a little bit of expert advice from 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 a few special guests. One of which I cannot reveal because it's a to me at least a very big deal because it's yeah. a big book author. Um, but um, yeah, that's what I'm working on. And obviously, for Citron food, uh, I need a lot of chilies. So I, st I stocked up on that. And I had like this huge, it was like this four times the size of my head. It's still here. No, I think it's in the other room. It's just ginormous bag yeah. of chilies. I haven't seen anything like that before. But what kind, of, what kind of chilies did you end up using? Well, I believe. Those are our jingtiao or something close oh, to those. Okay, so yeah. But I don't know because on the package, all it says is like a very generic dry chilies, and then it doesn't say anything. They're from China, but yeah. in Chinese, it just says la jiao gan, and then yeah, yeah, that's yeah. It. yeah no. So welcome I, to yeah. like the most frustrating thing in the world, right? Because like you know, lots of times like you, we want to like kind of understand like okay, what kind of like dried chilies mm -hmm. are actually used here. Right. Yeah. And then you go to the market and you're like, uh, you know, what are these? Oh, these are dried chilies. Right. And then it's just like, well, uh, what kind of dried chilies? Eh, you know, dried chilies. It's like, exactly. Yeah. I think the one of the shorter ones, I think those are I think those are either cayenne or like the Japonese chilies. Mm -hmm. I think that's what they are. But yeah, I'm still like not sure. The Argent cow are the really long ones. Right. So. Oh, is it the really long one? No, then it's not Argentina. See, I have no idea. Yeah. Like, I, to me, it's always it's always fascinating. Oh, it depends. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh. <laughs> no, right. It does depend on the batch of Argentina. 
That's but I always, I'm always impressed by like how much into chilies both like people in, in Asia are, but also people in even North America. I think that's one of the biggest differences between like North American, like US cooking and like European cooking is that cocaine did you in, say? in Europe, it's pretty much just like, no, did, no, I did not say cocaine. What? <laughs> I thought you said what, how, how, did, how did this? <laughs> the difference between North American cocaine and European cocaine. But you said cooking. European <laughs> cocaine, yeah. making the food. Yes. Yeah. No, but, Sorry, but I think like, um, so ju just a very biased, very subjective European view. I think sometimes um, Americans kind of oversimplify European cooking until it comes to peppers. Like in America, everyone's about like all these different amazing peppers because I think you guys are close to Mexico and you have access to right. all this amazing stuff. Plus, chilies are from the Americas anyway, right? So the, the varieties are like, there are so many and you guys are so like, you, for this you use like a smoked poblano and this and that. And in, in Europe, it's just You need chilies. a hearty fruity chili, yeah. Yeah, and in Europe, it's just like sweet paprika and chili, the end. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think yeah. that's basically kind of like the way it is like in Guangdong, right? You know, it's just like, yeah, yeah. you know, you have the dried chilies you have the and then you also ones. have like the uh, fresh ones. And there's yeah. like red and green, right? Exactly. This one's spicier than the other. Yeah, you know. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. So Steph and Chris, you've recently moved to Shunda and last time we met up in Shenzhen, you were talking to me about how great the cuisine is there. Um, could you give us an update on what the food is like in Shunda, what makes it so good and do you have any favorite dishes? Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> uh... The food is great. <laughs> uh, it's like, so Shunde, it's basically like the center of Cantonese food where uh, like, uh, you can you can say it's like epicenter of like Cantonese food. And here the culinary tradition is so strong. Like every family uh, is just has like all this, like everybody is like a good cook. So like when you have such a good baseline and you go out to eat, uh, even just like a steam fish, it's done perfectly. And there are so many restaurants here. Also got like, um, yeah, a huge competition. So they're trying to do, uh, they're also like trying to innovate, uh, try to create different variations, maybe based on more traditional dishes. Uh, so yeah, it makes yeah. us like, yeah, sorry. Yeah, it might have been just a glitch in the matrix there. Right. The uh, yeah, I think one of the things is you end up getting so spoiled, right? Yeah. Where it's just like you end up having this like amazing meal, and it's just like ah, you know that place was pretty good. Yeah, you know it's like you know it's like the expectation becomes like you know something like done perfectly. So it's like yeah, yeah we are incredibly spoiled nowadays. Uh, but yeah, you know, once you can actually come back in, into the country or also on the way to Korea, yeah, you have to come here and have some of the Cantonese food. It's uh, yeah, for arguably sure. the best place for Cantonese food. In the world. Yeah. Uh, okay. An argument could be made for Hong Kong, Guangzhou, maybe Macau, but the, yeah, it's one of the best places. Well, one day we're all meeting in, in, in somewhere in Guangdong and doing a level 999 street food tour. No, 100%. level 9,999. Exactly. Yeah, you got to add, you gotta add that, that nine, you know. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man, that's hilarious. Oh, and Dong, by the way, I tried making your pulled noodle recipe <clears> the other day. Mm -hmm. I failed. I think I did something really wrong with the dough. Um, I don't think I, that I needed it enough. I, I also, I didn't use high gluten dough and I'm not sure if I needed to use glue, uh, dough with a high gluten content. <laughs> I don't know like, either. What you think I did wrong? Like, do you have any tips yeah. for me? So a, lot of, uh, so a lot of people like you have been trying and asking me about the hand pulled noodle recipe. And spoiler yeah. alert, Chris and Steph just did a hand pulled noodle recipe, which answers yeah. a lot of questions. But I think in the greater hand-pulled noodle world, there are still a few mysteries to me. Like for example, I managed to make hand-pulled noodles with just flour, water, salt by resting my dough overnight. Um, 
but uh, which is kind of like I think what you tried to do, right, Amy? Yeah. Right, yeah. So, you know, I, and so, so for me, in the beginning, that like it, it, it started by accident, and then it kind of started working better and better, and then I kind of tried to develop this this method. I just forgot my dough overnight one time, and then it, like I noticed that like it stretches like crazy. Started working on that, but it's just like it, there's just always so so much that can go wrong, and so many tiny little details about hand pulled noodles and yeah. um, it's it's a very difficult recipe to test because for me whenever I do a test batch like my shoulders hurt and I need to like rest for half an hour I know I know Steph I know Steph knows exactly what I'm talking about <laughs> but but that's the crazy part it's like very difficult like you can't like try like oh I'm gonna try like here are three doughs let me try to like hand pull each batch it's yeah. impossible like you will just die no it's also that. like you know i'm just kind of like uh, i forget who was like asking us sometime we were just like uh looking at i think it was like some pizza video or some people were kind of like uh talking about like different doughs right yeah. like and then they like actually like filmed like this is what happens if you do it like this this is what happens and it's just like if you that would be awesome if somebody did that for like hand pulled noodles but that was so much work it was like three days of filming just to like yeah just yeah. for that video. Yeah, right. So, yeah, and then and then the yeah. thing is like when you make like one batch of dough and then you say like okay, I'm going to use part of this dough to like try one thing and another part to do try another thing. As you yeah. try these things, time keeps going on and that makes the batch is okay. different because one batch has like rested an hour longer than the other and that's already a different, you know, world. Yeah. So, pulled noodles is extremely difficult to test and also extremely difficult to film yourself doing. But to get back to your question, Amy, like what, what might it have been that you've done wrong? So I think it probably is, and it's not gonna be a very satisfying answer, but it probably is technique. But from, yeah. for me, I, tr I tried playing around with all sorts of doughs um, yeah. that you can find in Germany, like kind of like bread flour with lots of gluten and all purpose flour. And when I rest them overnight with a, 50 to 55 percent hydration and a little bit of salt i can pull them i can make pulled noodles with all sorts of different doughs might have to do with the milling of uh, german flour which i think tends to be a bit more fine than in other places but the, i'm not 100 percent sure on that but yeah. the thing is that i've been testing out so many batches and i've been like just pulling and trying and and literally like the first time i tried hand pulled noodles was like five years ago like way before I had the channel. So this is something I've been like, oh, like trying on and off for a long time. And I think I just slowly started to get the technique down from just yeah. lots and lots of practice, which allows me to kind of take not so easy to pull those and I can sort of get them stretchy. So one thing, I guess this might be a little bit of a spoiler for the next video, right? Something- I think we already talked about it. I guess yeah. we already talked about it in the last video. Yeah. Uh, yeah something yeah, yeah. that we can do, um, you know, I know there's there's also another really good Chinese cooking channel. You know, the uh, <laughs> what we're doing like next week, um, there's like a way that you can make them where basically like after you do like a long rest, you just, you cut them into strip, into like ribbons, let them rest. Yeah. And then you can just like pull it like that. It's you don't look as awesome as like the people at the Lamian shops, right? Yeah. But like, uh, <laughs> yeah, you can make a completely delicious noodle. Like I just ate a test batch right before this. So, oh, is that what you were eating before? Yeah, yeah. yeah it was that with oh. like you know, like a roast goose leftover that we had. So yeah. Really yeah, and I think good. that's that's the good news for everyone trying to make hand pulled noodles. I think if your dough fails and you will need more than one batch to practice, it's also like one of the things you guys, uh, Chris and Steph, you wrote in your comments, like don't dream about f pulling this off literally on the first try. So, <laughs> so, but the good news is you can always like kind of rework them into like kind of like a simple hand pulled noodle and always like save your dough like that, I think. Yeah. Oh, awesome. so you don't have to throw it away. Okay, good to know. Well, the reason that we are here um, is to play some trivia. So how about we get stuck into it? Right, yeah. Yeah. Well, no, let's do it. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, oh, can, so I, can I just say, can I, sorry, can I just say one last thing? Because uh, I see people in my chat mentioning uh, the nutritional yeast for hand-pulled noodles. That is something oh. Serious Eats, um, Tim, I think, uh, from Serious Eats discovered yeah. that and shared that. 
which is, I think, a great innovation. I've done a first test batch. Did you try that? Batch. Yeah, I did, I did the first test batch, and it definitely pulled like crazy. It pulled like crazy, so that definitely works. I'm not sure like about texture and flavor yet. Haven't gotten that far in testing, but it definitely pulls like crazy with nutritional yeast. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I so, heard. Yeah, that, yeah, I heard something to be careful about that though, because yeah, I mean, obviously, sorry, Avi, if you're in this space, you know, we. This is like, you know, kind of like, a, what do you call it? Like Chinese, you know, cooking gossip. It's like, oh yeah, no, I mean like, yeah, I've heard about the serious yeah. yeast, nutritional yeast recipe. The nooch, yeah. Yeah, so uh, yeah, we haven't tried that. One of the things though that I've heard though, to be careful if you're going that route, make sure that you have like a fresh thing of nutritional yeast. Apparently oh. it doesn't quite as work, work as well if it's like a really old tin or something. Just for oh. anybody in the comments there. Good to know. Good to know. Yeah. Okay. Well, that was just, I, we just had to mention the nooch oh, for talking about. Because I wouldn't have been able to sleep tonight if I didn't know about nutritional yeast in dough. Yeah. Now I'll sleep <laughs> like a little baby. Um, yeah. So let's go with the trivia. Um, I'll get the ball rolling. Um, and so basically we've all prepared five questions each. Um, and so everyone that's watching from home, feel free to play along um, and write your answers down or help your favorite YouTuber in their chat um, answer the question. And the format is going to be um, ask one question and then immediately answer that question. Uh, so it'll be like question, answer, question, answer, question, answer. That way, even if you're just watching for 10 minutes, you can just tune in. Um, we'd prefer if you stay, but if you want to go, you know, uh, no hate there. Um, so I am going to get my screen up here and share with you my trivia. Yay. Uh, ooh. I think I have it. Yeah. I think, I think we might have like a... I don't know. It feels like we have like an advantage though, right? Because, you know, we're two people. Andong's right. one person. Yeah. And you have a dog. Yeah. You yeah, have a dog. <laughs> you know. Yeah. yeah. So just, just an FYI for people watching, because I'm, I believe there's a little bit of confusion. Um, every, like if you're in, for example, Amy's channel and you comment, like if you're watching this stream on Amy's channel, if you comment, then Amy will see the comment and the others will not. So this is, if you, if you, if you want to, if you want to help, let's say Amy in the trivia, then you should go on Amy's channel and uh, help her in the chat there. Because like so I, uh, Chris and Steph, like people are loving your Pokemon, which I believe is in the chat, which I believe is referring to your dog. But yeah, <laughs> so just just wanted to pass that along. And guys, if you want to comment on, on on the dog specifically, I'll take those comments because I love that dog. It's very cute. But you should probably do that on Chris and Steph's channel. <laughs> I'll also take any comments about the dog. But yeah, again, yeah, um, cool beans. Well, I'm gonna get myself a pet. Oh. Well, you guys get yourself a pen and paper if you if you want to write it down the answers. Um, and here Wait, I go that, with my trivia. Is it going to be like a three, two, one, show the answer kind of thing, or I don't know. Yeah. How should we do this? Um, well, I mean, it just depends. Oh, with our questions, it was going to be like a time thing, like whoever could get it first. Oh. It just depends on your questions, right? Well, so, yeah. So how about we just do it? Like you know, pen. and a pen. Yeah. Oh, so should I should I, should I write things down? Yeah, yeah, just getting a pen. I'll okay. I'll leave. I like your picture, by the way. I like the dude. I I'll, I'll, I'll get a pen. Uh, Is it I, Beijing? The picture? Yeah, yeah. It's um uh, one of my favorite things to do when I'm in Beijing is to walk through the hutongs. Um, and that was one photo I took one day when I had my camera on me. Um, yeah, I love that photo as well. Hmm. Yay. Okay. okay. So will, will only written answers count? What if I know the answer and I want to answer real fast? Do I have to yeah. write it down first? I just, think what we'll just do answer we'll, as fast as you can. Well, that, I think we need to give the people watching a chance to to see the um to have a think first because okay. there's about a, a ten second delay between mm. us actually talking and what comes up on YouTube. True. <laughs> yeah. Very yeah. unfair. So give it at least 10 seconds or 20 seconds, I guess. Let's give 20 yeah. seconds um, per question and then um, and then I'll yeah, ask yeah. you how to answer. So, yeah. Yeah. 
Question number one. All okay. right. Uh, oh, oh yeah, there we go. How many ministers had the end of its capital? Shit. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, help out your favorite channel. Uh, so here's, here's a guy with a major in Chinese studies. And I do not we do? Okay. Let's yeah. see. Come on. Come on, guys. Come on, chat. Um, Come on, everyone. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm watching. Like, maybe we can work backwards, right? <laughs> I think our chat's a little bit slower than theirs. Yeah, no, it, it takes a while before um, YouTube sees the, um, the live show if there's a bit of a delay. Um, but I think, oh, so that's coming up now. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Uh huh. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Wait. All right. Here we go. Got some answers coming up. Oh, I mean, right. there's Rob. What's up, Rob? <laughs> um, oh. Okay, guys. Okay. I'm ready. Yeah, I'm gonna. Should we go with Rob? Yes, I think so. Okay. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, Sorry for everybody hard. else. I don't know why I'm trusting our our friend Rob so much. Also, there's, there's Neil. So Neil and if Neil and Rob say the same thing, then you know. All right. Yeah. Hey, right, well, on the count of five, um, Ready? let me know what you think. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. C. Oh, 13. you're both right. Nice. Thank you, you okay. had in the chat. Thanks. You said yeah, thirteen. Everybody else. I was gonna guess like seven. Apparently, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Like, Feels wait. like I'm a bad Chinese person. Mm. Look, it's a, a hot, there are so many of those dynasties. Um, and it has, like, Xi'an has such a long history. And they even yeah. call it, like, of Chinese civilization. And, yeah, it's the most dynasties that set the city as a capital of any other city. So Xi'an is basically, yeah, the city that was the capital the most. Yeah, especially um, for those like short periods, like is that dynasty does that count? Like in Nanjing, it's like you can say six or ten, depends on how you count. So, right, yeah, hard yeah, question. Okay. I'm not, I'm not here for fun, you know. I'm here for to win. <laughs> um, and yeah, that's question number one. Let's go to question. Uh, okay. Mm. Hey. I'm gonna I'm gonna I've actually included a picture of the ring road. Um so I'm just gonna leave it here. <laughs> um because otherwise we're good answer. Um the question is how many ring roads does Beijing have? I think Wait, I know this one. Yeah, I think I know this one too. Um what about you? Well, I can I can I can write it down. I can write it down. So yeah, yeah, I I definitely know something. <laughs> Uh, okay, I'm gonna go with this. All right, I'm ready. Reveal. Sorry. Okay. Sorry, chat. Uh, we are very. Uh, yeah. Pro pretty certain about. We're pretty that, sure about this one. Okay. Yeah. What do you guys think? How many? Are we? Are we doing, doing it? Are you doing the countdown? Yeah. No. No yeah. countdown because yeah. Okay. All right. All right. So yeah, we had five. Oh, oh, five is. Or is it six? Maybe but they wait. built another one. I don't know. Yeah, exactly. No, that wait. is a trick question. That okay. is a very. Oh, no. Question. They built another one. Ah. Yes. Wait, 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 wait. You ha no one has won yet. I need to explain wait. this. So, neither of you are right. <laughs> so, um, if you've been to Beijing before, you'll be familiar with the shape of Beijing having lots of circles. Um, most people might think that it has six ring roads, but actually last year, or no, two years ago, they completed what's known as the seventh ring road, wow. also known as Motorway D95. It's a thousand kilometers long compared to- oh, I guess for the, what do you call it? Uh, Olympics or whatever, right? I'm not too sure. It was yeah, because isn't it going to be like up in like Chengde, isn't that? Yeah, it's like in Hebei already, yeah. right? Yeah, I don't yeah, know. Basically that is the connector region, and it only has thirty-eight kilometers of the a thousand kilometer track is actually through Beijing, but they do call it the seventh ring road. So actually, the correct answer is seven. Ah. No, wait, Amy, Amy, I must correct yeah. you because 
Can you tell me yeah. where the first ring road is? I don't actually know. It doesn't exist. That is the trick question. That's why I am right with six. Oh. <laughs> because the oh. first ring, the first ring road used oh, yeah. to be, yeah, it used to be like a. Yeah. Oh. That's super. Oh yeah. Okay. Andron gets a point for that one for sure. Well, I, I used to live in Beijing, and I am very lucky that I got this one right. <laughs> you know what? You get a point for, for that, Andron. Um, that's uh, yes. yeah. That's really cool knowledge. Um, that's yeah, awesome. really very one one. I don't. I had no idea about that. It used um, to be okay. the first first ring road. Uh, used to be like a like a light rail or something around the city, which is not oh. around for fifty years oh, or more. Yes. Finally. Oh, and, um, well done. Okay, uh, so uh, question three. Uh, which ethnic minority celebrates the Water Splashing Festival? Fun fact, that is me. That is me being splashed at the Water Splashing Festival. What? Yeah. Water Splashing Festival? Guys in the <laughs> chat? Anybody? <laughs> it was so much fun, this water splashing festival. It's like the ultimate excuse to be cheeky. Just run around, splash people with water. Um, I really like the super soaker. I I, I just like saw yep. that picture. Yeah. Yep. People really get into it. Where well, where exactly is it in? I know, I know you know. So this is in my Oh if yeah, yeah. right, right. Clue. Yeah, I guess we, we can't we can't give Andong any hints. No. Yeah, you know. yeah no. <laughs> well, you don't need to give me hints because I have my folks in the chat. Oh, okay. Yeah. Check out the thing. Um, see if you know the answer. Okay, I hope nobody in our chat is also telling Andong's chat the answer. You better be in this one chat. Don't be the best. <laughs> no double A. Your and actually, just to clarify, um, I want the Chinese ethnic minority name, not the name that the ethnic minority might go by in another country. Because oh. yeah. Okay. Yeah. What? So some because people are in my chat are giving me the correct name, but what that ethnic minority is known in another neighboring country. Because it's okay. also in okay. another yeah. neighboring country. What? I don't <laughs> because there's also, remember they're in yeah, that no. other country. Southeast con Asian country that they live. Yeah. Anyway. Okay. Well, I'm going to reveal the answer now. Is everyone ready? Right. Yeah. Yes. Okay, the answer is the die. Dai yeah. Zhu. Yes. Um, okay. Yeah, yeah, we. Yeah, here we go. Yeah, here. Wait, do I need oh, to like, prove it to you? Anyway, yeah. Let's, got it. Yeah, so the name yeah. of the festival is the Water Splashing Festival, also known as like, yes, yeah, Songkran in, I think, because um, this ethnic minority isn't only in China, it, they're um, okay. spread around the um, um, right. um, yeah. Southeast Asian region. Um, and I had the opportunity to actually go and celebrate this water splashing festival a few years ago. And it's basically the um, Chinese New Year, the New Year celebration for the Dai ethnic minority. And by splashing water, you're eliminating the evil spirits and bad luck of the year. So it's by splashing someone, you're essentially wishing them good luck. So um, basically an excuse to soak your parents or your children and just take it yeah. out and have, yeah. a, have a bit of a... Um, you're not vibing. But yeah, the Daizu is the answer. Next question. Cool. Okay, here's the question. What is the biggest province in China? A, this is a two-part question. You'll get half a point if you can guess by size, which is biggest. And mm. another half point if you can guess by population, what's biggest. So it's a two-point. Right. It's a, it's a, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm pretty yeah. sure of that. Right. Mm -hmm. we'll, we'll also just wait on, make sure that we're not. Yeah. We'll we'll wait on the chat we, too we because I'm pretty. Right. We're pretty sure it. of this one. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, this I don't think we can. You know, we could say yeah. anything we wanted. You know, we could be lying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This, this is all on the line. You know. Mm. And, uh... Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. So. Okay. Right. <sighs> um. <laughs> okay, so yeah. Okay. okay. Well. Oh. Oh, interesting. 
Wait, but she's a province. Very in that, that's so uh, the province is like the 32 province, like one of look. Um, no, I, I, I'm also including any autonomous regions. Okay. Um, okay, okay, okay. I don't know what the technical definition of a province is, but when you see the map of China and it's like up and divided, I'll just call those a, 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 pro, a pro province, I guess. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. no good question. I don't know if I uh, made a mistake in the wording yeah. of that. There. So like Ningxia counts, okay? Yes. Because that's definitely the most populous. Definitely. <laughs> sure about that. Okay. okay. Are we all? Oh. Oh, oh this, this this is so difficult. Oh um, wait. I don't think we should bring this up. Yeah. Okay. All right. Mm, oh god, this is so difficult. Okay. Well. Okay. I think I'm. I think I've settled. Okay. There's no googling. Steph and Chris, how are you guys? Are you good to go? One sec, one sec. Yeah, one second. Okay, okay. Sorry. Someone in my chat is asking, is it hot in Australia right now? Yes, but it's been pouring all day um, and it's gone from being super cold to being super hot and I don't, my body doesn't really know what to do. So um, just to answer your question there. Is everyone ready? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm going to the answer now, and uh, the biggest province in China by size is Xinjiang. Yeah. Right. Uh, that red one highlighted there. Did you get that right, you guys? Yep. Yes. Oh, well. amazing. And um, what did you guys think about by population? What was your answer for that one? Well, my final answer is Guangdong. Even though oh, I'm what about yeah. Guangdong? Yeah, we also had Guangdong. You would be correct. Um, Guangdong has a population of over 110 million. And I guess it isn't also surprising because there are so many huge cities in Guangdong. Like you've got Shenzhen, you've got Macau, Guangzhou, like so many massive mega cities in that one region. So I guess um, not surprising. Uh, moving on to question five. Um, Everyone who has watched my videos before would know the answer to this question because I made a whole video about it. Um, which Chinese port city did Marco Polo once refer to as the Alexandria of the East? Yeah. Oh, easy. We don't oh, even really need to look at chat. Oh, do you know because you've seen my video or because you just know? <laughs> we uh, we've we, been there. Yeah, we also went there. Oh, damn. <laughs> Shit. I I don't know. I only I only know that Marco Polo is a nerd for Marco Polo. But yeah, all like I all I keep hearing is that Marco Polo was a fraud. So I don't know. A what? A fraud or a fraud? A fraud. A, a fraud. Oh. Because apparently he wasn't even in China. Some people oh. say there there's dispute. There's dispute because, for example, fun fact: Did you about he wrote so much about China, but. He failed to mention things like chopsticks, and that w wouldn't that be something you'd notice when you're in China? Because he wrote yeah. about food, he never mentioned chopsticks. Oh, I'll have to look into that. Dead more. giveaway. Dead yeah. giveaway. <laughs> Good yeah, there was also other things, but then weirdly, like I think the scholarly consensus was like, oh yeah, this dude's like completely full of it, right? Until like they saw mention of him in Chinese sources. And they were like, wait, what? How could that be? Anyway, it's kind of like, I could be wrong. Not a, not a historian. I'm going to yeah, go. This is not a good place for I'm, I'm going to look into it. That sounds super interesting. Yeah. I didn't know about any of that. Right. Oh, so that yeah. Thanks for bringing that up. I end on. Um, so are you guys <laughs> ready? The over there. I'm going to yeah. give you the answer now. Everyone ready? Yes. Yeah. Hey, the answer is Quanzhou, um, one of my favorite cities in China. Did you guys get it right? Yeah, no, I didn't. Oh, what did no, you put? Now it's a tie then. I, I was gonna go with Hangzhou, which it's not. Oh, damn. Well, yes, it was Quanzhou. Um, I made a whole video about it. Um, so you guys, everyone can go to my channel and watch it because it's my favorite video that I've ever made, but it didn't go very well on YouTube. Um, so I'm like oh. trying to more justice for Tranjo video. Um, and basically, uh, Tranjo was the um, the beginning of the Maritime Silk Road in ancient 
not ancient times, like probably like a thousand years ago. I don't know if you can call that ancient. And um, yeah, it was like the entry point for people from all different cultures. And as a result, in Chuanjo, there are so many different um, religions that still practice in Chuanjo. You can walk down a street and see a mosque, a church, a Buddhist pagoda, a Taoist temple. It's it's super, super diverse um, when it comes to religion and culture. Um, but yeah, that's the end of my questions. I hope that you enjoyed it. Uh, can we get a tally count? Uh, and Dong, how many did you get? Four out of five. Ooh. Okay, four out of five, and uh, Chinese cooking demystified. How many also did you get? Also, four out of five. Oh, <laughs> I know. It's getting juicy. Getting fierce. <laughs> well, that was super fun. Uh, who would like to go next and share their questions? I can go next if you like. Mm -hmm. And Dong, it's your time. All right. Think, so let I me. I think our questions might be a little bit much again. <laughs> That's always, the best. I always though. make. I'm bad at making trivia questions because like, I don't, it's always hard to know like what would be like obvious, you know? Yeah. I mean, the obvious ones are too, are boring. Nobody needs obvious yeah. answers. Yeah, I know. There's like this magic level in between like stuff that is too easy <laughs> and too difficult where it's like the stuff that people are like, oh, what was the answer to that? That's like the ideal trivia question and, uh, yeah, I, yeah, our questions might be a little bit weird. Anyway, yeah. we'll see. Yeah. Yeah. Are, Amazing. You guys seeing, are you guys seeing my screen? Sorry, that's my job. I need to add the, this. Uh, ah, yeah. add it. There, so, there we go. Are we, are we good to go? All right. So let's do trivia. So I do hope you're ready. So first question, we'll start with an easy one. Uh, when was beer classified as an alcoholic beverage in Russia? Oh, I don't know. Someone tell me. Yeah. Uh, okay. Are you looking for like the exact year? Uh, yeah, but yeah, but like if you're yeah, I'll, there's a little bit of like a margin of error that I'll I'll be okay with. But just give me a, a rough estimate. Okay. Uh, guys, My I need guess. help. In the chat okay, I, I have like a guess, but you know. Yeah, it, it, it's not really fair to, like, this is not a question. Like, you either know or you don't know. I don't think you can guess this one <laughs> or, okay. like, deduct. Yeah, I I have, I've got a bold answer. All right, all right. How about you, Amy? Are you ready? Are you guys no, ready? Not. Okay, um, I, okay, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to go with Mickey C um, in the comments. Um, okay, <laughs> so whoever... <laughs> Whoever of you uh, is uh, closer will get the point. And if you're both spot on, then you both get a point. So okay. if, you're, if you're ready, then reveal. I will reveal in a three, two, one now. And it, the answer is in 2013, uh, until oh. 2013, beer and other beverages mm -hmm. with less than 10% yeah. alcohol were classified as a soft drink in Russia. We went with... Uh, never. Yeah, we went with never. This was, <laughs> this was like, uh, yeah, Alex Schubert was like, yeah, no, beer's not an alcoholic beverage in Russia. Like, that, that seemed like it sounded right, yeah. you know? Yeah. <laughs> I think the legal definition probably uh, is, is, says that it's now an alcoholic beverage, but in people's minds, maybe still not. I don't know. I, but yeah. I, it, I had someone in my chat say that it, the answer is uh, uh, 10,066. Uh, which now thinking about it is kind of a weird answer because I don't think I can imagine people sitting around in that time drinking soft drinks. So, um, like just having, <laughs> having a coke with the with the cattle and the castle. Anyway, I mean, I think twenty twenty is a little bit closer to twenty thirteen than you yeah, know, uh, yeah. But that it's, is it's true. Right. That's true. We get it right, you know. Amy, you could have guessed almost anything and you probably would have been closer, but your <laughs> guess was so far off that this point will have to go to Chris and Steph. I think I'm gonna no, have to mind that never though. Yeah, we said never. I don't I don't think we should get it, you know. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think never okay. is also not close. Right. Well, because accepted. it also could extend into the future, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. except that zero points for you and zero, zero points. points for you. Okay. Good. No so worries. keep move, keep moving. Next question. It's uh, this was just a warm up. Now we're getting uh, it's getting more going to get more fun. So which okay. of the following food items is not 
not a new world crop. And uh, just to clarify, of course, new world crop means that it's uh, something that grew only in the Americas and was only brought to the rest of the world after white people started going there. Okay. Yes, I, I know that for a fact. Yeah. Okay, so there okay. the options are yeah. sunflower, blueberry, cinnamon, and corn. Yeah, because uh, there's a few that I definitely know. Okay, yeah. very I'm good. This, Amy. How about yeah, you? I think I'm gonna take a guess. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good. Okay, so then, please, uh, I'm revealing the answer in three, two, one. <laughs> cinnamon. Uh, oh. Of course, yeah. The, the answer is yes. cinnamon. Yeah. Did you? Have so. That Oh my gosh. So the, the thing is like cinnamon, like even if you don't know the answer, you could think about it. And cinnamon was one of the main spices traded on the Silk Road. So that mm. could have been like a clue to you. So uh, because mm. Silk Road, it's been around for a while. So that's yeah. been around before people, before white people discovered America. So, and then sun, like to me, it was new that the sunflower is from, from the Americas. That's like crazy to me because in Russia and in Ukraine and Eastern Europe, it's everywhere. It's like everybody's eating. Yeah, that, that was the one thing I was like, okay, like I knew that blueberry and corn weren't new world, but then it's like, uh, then with like cinnamon and sunflower, it's like sunflower, yeah, that could be old yeah. world. But then it was, yeah. Is that around Central Asia? Because, uh, you know, guilin, right? Is, yeah, guilin, that's like called cinnamon forest, so. Right, and that was actually like a really old one. Uh, but then it also depends, that's true. how do you define cinnamon? Oh, you know, there's, a, there's a technicality about the definition of cinnamon. I didn't well, know that. The whole, yeah, it's no, a family. It's, okay, oh. now, I. Uh, <laughs> I think it's fine. I'm, I'm team, it's, no, okay, fine. We won't. Like, oh, somebody, oh, somebody okay. in our in in our chat was saying, "Chris, you're a nerd." And yeah, I, I mean, I, I feel like yeah, I you do not disagree. Known that by now. Chris, yeah. you're here. We are all nerds in our field. I right, love right. being a nerd, and I love the nerdiness in everyone. Yeah. So, and then just one last note on that one: blueberries. Uh, it's a bit confusing because there is a thing called a bilberry, I believe, technically, which is something that is, looks quite similar to the blueberry and is uh, native to Europe, which, like, for example, I grew up uh, eating and, like, collecting and gathering in the forests uh, around uh, Russia and uh, northwestern oh, Russia. Uh, but it's, I think it's called the bilberry. And uh, the, the confusing thing is that pretty much everything you buy commercially and the stuff that you find in blueberry muffins is actually the blueberry, the plump, big, fat, sweet blueberry from the Americas. And the bilberries are these like tiny little forest blueberries in Europe. They're like okay. sour, right? Yeah, they're more, they're, they're not as sweet, but I think very delicious yeah. and fragrant. So ready to move to the next question? Yes. Yeah, both are from Asia, right? You know, cassia I think is from like, you know, uh, okay, sorry, yeah. That's cinnamon, that's cinnamon, right? Yeah, so there's like, you know, there's the cassia and, and then, then there's the also cinnamon. the quote unquote true cinnamon, which mm. is from like uh, Sri Lanka, right? But then, yeah. I don't know. I it's like a debate whether cassia should be also called cinnamon. I am on team that cassia is technically cinnamon, but I understand the uh, David M. I understand your uh, your reservations. Very good. I love that so much. Next question, guys. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay, moving on. So this one, uh, the schnitzel, is among Germany's favorite dishes. But back in the GDR, socialist Germany, for those who don't know the GDR, uh, what did people substitute for pricey cuts of veal and pork? What was people's low-end solution to having schnitzel in the communist part of, former communist part of Germany? Oh, Wait, hang on, we need to make sure that Amy doesn't see. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's like, Wait. <laughs> yeah, you could like read my map. I don't know. Yeah. Don't worry, I can't see anything. I'm too focused on my own answer, which well, I have. Amy, is your is, is are your German folks watching? I no, I don't know. No, yeah, we'll I am pretty like, sure of that. There, I don't. I don't think they're watching. Mm, I think I'm still right. I don't know. Okay, um, I think. Hang on. Let's let's see if there's any more chats. <laughs> yeah. Okay, mm. I'll give you five. Yeah. Four, no, no, three. I think it's okay. Fine, I'm just going with it. 
Final Sorry, answer, Chris? Yeah. You might be right. Okay. Okay. Ready? Uh, and the answer is this. The famous GDR Jäger schnitzel, which means like a, a hunter's oh, schnitzel, was, was, totally made from, <laughs> was made from a processed cooked sausage. I see. Yeah, oh, I guess. Oh, it's like spam. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 yeah I was supposed to. I. Oh, you were you you crossed out dog, right? That's no, what you had. I had no, I crossed I, out. I had like, dog here. One thousand dog. <laughs> yeah, I heard that. There's like because there's like this whole thing with like the news recently or whatever, right? And then I heard there's like some people that were saying like, oh. They used to eat like dog in Germany, and I was like, "Huh, interesting." So I thought, like, you know, there might be like some kind of like trick question there. I don't know. I guess I was just way off. Yeah. 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 But I think I think so. I, people in the chats are saying uh, this is spam, and I, I think it's. I would I would say I let spam count as the right answer because it's similar to spam. Obviously, it's like a very processed sausage, like just all the trimmings and pieces blended yeah, into a like pink paste. Between, like. Spam and mortadella. Yeah, it's like bologna mortadella family, but on the low end because, like, a good mortadella from Italy can actually be very delicious. <laughs> but this is uh, not that type of mortadella. <laughs> okay, so yeah, and it also, as you can see, uh, like the, the classic schnitzel comes with like potatoes uh, or potato salad, something like that. And this one pretty much always came with like pasta, which unfortunately in Germany is very often overcooked. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. All right, so next question, are you ready? Right. Okay, so next question is, which of the following words origins has nothing to do with salt? Is it salad, salute, salary, or sauce? So we're talking about the word's origin story, like where does this word come from? Mm -hmm. The meaning, today's meaning might have shifted, but it, the original version of the word can be linked to a story with salt. Yeah. Dem, 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 dem. I'm waiting for someone in the chat to pop up. I have no clue. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Go, go back. I, I think I have, yeah, I knew that one, right? So yeah. Yeah, those are the same two that I'm, I'm between, yeah. Okay. I've gotten three yeah. answers in my chat so far, and they're all different. All different. They're okay. every one of each. Mm, okay, let's go with the dino dino soup girl. Okay. okay. I'm gonna go for. I'm gonna go for. Okay, I have an I have an answer. You have an answer. Oh, no. and, okay. What do you think? Chris and Steph, you got yeah, an answer. Yeah, okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Or the other one. Whatever. Wait, let's just. The, yeah. Are you sure? You got it. Okay. All right. All right. You got it? Sorry. Okay. Okay. Next, so next revealing executive decision. Revealing in three, two, oh. one. Boom. It's salute. Ah! So, so <laughs> salute comes from a Latin word meaning something like healthy or health. Uh, and oh. and then all the other words. So a salad meant uh, because sal or something like that, sal cell is like mm -hmm. um, Latin for salt. And a salad was just like salted vegetables. That's what it originally meant. Um, a sauce is um, also comes from like that's the the salty stuff that you put on the vegetables. And actually, if you go to Spanish, where of course this is called salsa, you can actually still have the S A L in there. And sauce is like a Frenchified version of of salsa. So it's like it was Latin sal, then it became salsa, and then it became sauce, and then it became sauce in English. Interesting. And other languages. And salary uh, was just like an allowance given to like soldiers uh, and workers um, to buy salt. So yeah, that's yeah, right. that was that was the one that I'd heard of, right? So it was like, mm. yeah. You guys get it right, Steph and Chris? No, we guessed sauce. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. I'd good, good, same. good. All right. So then, uh, last question out of mine. You ready? Yeah. Good. What, uh, which type of meat is traditionally consumed raw in Germany and in the shape of what other animal? So <laughs> let, me, let me elaborate. So there is one type of meat that is eaten in Germany, sometimes raw, not always. And when it's eaten raw, 
it's oftentimes presented in the shape of another animal, not the one that you're eating. Which meat is it? And in, sh in the shape of what other animal? <laughs> I actually have uh, had in Germany. It's quite a, is it, is it the same raw meat that people often have for breakfast? Can I get a clue? Yes, it's very often. So yeah, that makes it uh, probably worse. Uh, it's, uh, it's raw meat that German people love to have for breakfast. <laughs> yeah, some people in the chat are already getting it right. I love that. Probably because mm -hmm. we have some German followers. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think he's yeah, a German. Sure. Shape, I don't think he's what's a the shape? The shape. That, that's right. But there's like, actually, if you know the right answer, uh, the, the German word, the, both, both is in there. Both is in there because there's a name for this. But yeah, we'll get into this in a second. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So people, people are definitely okay. people definitely know the answer. I think every German knows the answer to this. It's, okay, um, I'm we're gonna follow ping ping here. Okay. Yeah. So Amy, you know what ping type ping of meat ping. it is. I don't, you know, don't know. I don't know the shape. I, I'm pretty sure. I've never uh, asked. All yeah, I know is that it. I've eaten it. It's raw meat, and they sprinkle it with some um, some onion. Um, and I'm just using my powers exactly. of production to know what meat is more safer to eat raw than others. So I think mm -hmm. I, have, I think I have the type of meat right, but as for the, um, okay, the shape. I'm just guess okay. the shape. Um, well, let's take a, take a guess. Take a guess. I don't okay, think what, you... what would be like the okay what? <laughs> <laughs> we're for the shape. We're literally just going like uh, you know what Daryl Snow's answer. So. If it seems really absurd, it's probably right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So are we ready for the reveal? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So revealing in three, two, one. Boom. So this is the German Met Eagle. Oh, so, yes. <laughs> oh right. yeah. Cool. Daryl, thank you. Yeah. Congrats, Daryl. You, you just yeah, saved yeah, it. Yeah, you know. So yeah, this is, I, I don't I have no idea where this tradition I comes from. Oh, hmm? Yeah, what's the white stuff yeah, there? Onions? Sure onions, yeah. It's onions. It's onions. I think the fact that people are dressing this up as an as an as a hedgehog, I think the reason is that you just have these onions and it's like raw pork with onions, salt, and pepper. But you know, it's just like so easy to just stick these onions in there, and then it kind of looks like a hedgehog. And I think that's kind of how this came about. But I'm just guessing here. Yeah. <laughs> My boyfriend's but, gonna yeah. keep not getting this. I thought it was beef. I didn't realize yeah. that. Pork. I've been eating raw pork this whole time. I yep. thought that, isn't it like a bit eat raw pork? Like you get worms? I think raw beef would probably be worse, like more oh. dangerous for you. The thing is like the, with I, I believe with both pork and uh, beef, the bacteria that can harm you, most of it is on the outside of the meat. So oh. if you trim the outside and then you grind it, I believe it could be safe to eat, but please like don't, like this is not food science there, here. There's, I think like uh, one thing, I'm forgetting like off the top of my brain, there's what the name of like the disease is called. It's like begins with a TR or something. Anyway, like uh, apparently nowadays, like usually pork's pretty safe. Yeah. But I wouldn't, yeah. I wouldn't test it yeah. here in China, but yeah. Right, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then also in Germany, when you go to the meat counter, there's always like, Ooh kind of like hackepeta or met grade pork, mm -hmm. which is not more expensive, but I believe they just trim off the outside before they grind it or something like that. Makes okay, sense. good. So that, that, that's it from, yeah. from my side. How many did you guys get right? Big fat zero. Right. Okay, we got the pork hedgehog and cinnamon. cinnamon. Yeah. yeah, so we got two. All right, oh. all right. Okay. All right. So okay. I guess we finished up ours with a total of six. six. Okay. Right, but then, oh no, okay, so here's the thing. Um, this actually, uh, we'll, we'll try to figure this out because we ended up, uh, our questions are like complex multi-part things, right? So we were like, okay, we got through like, you know, pre prepping some of them. We are like, okay, we'll only do three, right? Because okay. otherwise it could potentially go on forever, right? Idea. So uh, yeah. Uh, ours are three, but I guess the last two will count as two points each, right? So that we all have a level playing field. Sounds right. good. Mm -hmm. uh, right. Okay. So 
Do, do, do. Now I need to remember how to do this. Uh, share screen. Okay. Share screen. All right. Application window. I am very, not an idiot. Me Sorry, too. Sorry, everybody. Next with this. Oh, here we go. I'll okay. You got, you, okay. Oh, that's the bar. That is yeah. the bar. Nailed it. Is it the same bar? Do I get a point? Yeah, 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 yeah. because the next one is, yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh my God. <laughs> I have a t shirt. Wait. I have that t shirt. Oh, really? Uh, Steph, yeah. you know, I mean, Steph, you're becoming a fashion icon. Do you know that? Look, your t shirts are becoming that. epic. <laughs> I can't believe no. you have that t-shirt. Yeah, come here. Okay. Oh, Amy's fetching her t-shirt, I think. Oh, I you see. You have a dog, too? Oh. This is my Bella. No, she's fetching the t-shirt. Okay, oh. okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we do have the same t-shirt. Yeah, no. Yo, wait, but yours doesn't say I'm cool, though, right? No, no, it does. It yeah, does? it was just, like, with the lighting. Oh, okay, yeah, because I didn't see that. Yeah, yeah. it's... It says I am cool. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a cool t shirt. It's the best. All right. Okay. So, okay. So now, hmm, okay. Basically, I'm kind of doing this on the seat of my pants here, right? Because for these, I guess we'll have it correct if you can get uh, more than half, right? Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, okay, now again, these are like kind of multi-part and I apologize in advance, right? So uh, yeah, we'll just basically, like I think everybody knows that there's like eight big cuisines in China, right? Now, obviously mm -hmm. there's more than that, right? There's no like, you know, Yunnan food or Guizhou food or, you know, like Dongbei food in here, but like of those eight, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I've actually, I just listed it on there. Uh, if you can see it, you know, the eight, maybe you'd need to, you know, zoom in. Basically, uh, just name one dish from each um, cuisine, right? So probably some might be easier than others. If you get more than half, then it counts as correct. Okay. Mm. One one dish from each cuisine. Okay, I think right. I can do this. Um. Okay. 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 That's okay. How many do we have to do to kind of get the point? Do we need uh, to get so all of them? Five. Five to get the point. Five. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. That that's fair. That's yeah. reasonable. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Okay. Okay, first one's easy. Mm. <laughs> yeah, you know. Whatever. Yeah, we do complicate the questions, apparently. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, because we did the quiz in Discord that yeah. month, right? And oh, we're like, oh. yes. everything's a multi-part. Sorry. Oh, this is this is this is the best. My my chat is the best. People in my chat, help me, please. Uh, okay, okay. Ooh, this this is e like some of them are so easy, and some of them are like. I have no idea. Having a mind blank. I feel the pressure. Yeah. Since I, have a I mean, actually, like, off the top of my head, I know very little about Hanwei food. Thank you. <laughs> you can still name a couple of the shows. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, OK, OK. Thanks, Rob. All right. So, okay. Guys, I need. You should uh, kind of. <sighs> oh, that, that's awesome. Okay. Are, are you guys basically ready? Do you need more time? I need I think... uh, two more seconds. Yeah. Okay. I okay. Someone in my chat could help me out with Jiangsu and Zhejiang. Oh, yeah. Jiangsu is also difficult for me. Well, I think it would be like kind of easy because especially, or excuse me, like easy to mix up because especially outside of those regions, like mm -hmm. if you're in Beijing or like Shenzhen or something, lots of times it's just like, yeah, you know, it's like a Jiangnan restaurant and it could be like either one, right? Mm -hmm. Ah, okay. Okay. So I'm, I'm good. 
okay. I, I'm, I'm not, but, oh, I All have right. one. Okay, yeah, okay, we're good to go. Okay, so now, <laughs> I, I didn't think this through. Yeah, we need to basically fact check each one now, <laughs> right? Um, well, uh, okay, why don't we just, we'll, we'll, we'll start with Andong. Okay, uh, all right, so let me start. So for Cantonese food, uh, that, that was super easy. There's like too many things to pick from. I can just pick any dim sum, I guess, and that would be xia uh, jiao, uh, uh, like a shrimp dumplings, let's say. Okay. Does that count? All right. Sorry. So for okay. Sichuan, I picked uh, twice cooked pork, hui mm -hmm. guo rou. Mm -hmm. Then for anhui, I did not know any, but uh, I got recommended a lot of things that I don't know if I want to try. But one of them is, uh, oh, I don't know how to read, uh, chou gui yu. It's like, Stinky yeah. steamed fish. Is that correct? Right. All right. Yeah. Well, thanks, guys. There's a bunch of people recommending that one. Good. Then for Jiang's, what's the Whoa. next one? Zhejiang food. Okay, Zhejiang food. Uh, I was, I'm guessing uh, the 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 Hu Tzu Yu, the Westlake uh, vinegar sure. fish. Does that count? Is Hangzhou in Zhejiang? Yeah. Yes. yes. Yeah. All right. Well, then that would that okay. should. Be I mean, yeah. Good. Right? I mean, you know, yeah. Sure. Tech. Okay, good enough for this yeah. for this quiz, I hope. <laughs> and then, um, so then the next one would be uh, Anhui food, right? Um, oh no, oh, sorry, that that was the, the the smelly fish. And then the next one is uh, Jiangsu food. Jiangsu food is Sung Shu Gui Yu, right? The the fish that that is in this red sauce um, and with the right, pine nuts. Also, they also have that. Yeah. yeah, I mean they also have that, right? Where where is it from originally? Shandong. It's from mm. Shandong originally, right? Oh, yeah, okay. but it's it's yeah, okay. They it's also have everywhere. It. Yeah, it's Actually. everywhere. Yeah, they okay. Have it in okay. So maybe half. Maybe. All right. That so means for food, yeah. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, this yeah. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Name one dish from the cuisine. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Good. 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 Okay. Then, um, cool. Unless for, you want to show for, off, you know, you already got the point. <laughs> oh, good, 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 good. Oh, nice. No, well, let me just finish. Like for Fujian. Oh, okay. I. Something I had there is guo bian hu, which is a, a very rare dish that I have not had anywhere else in China. Oh, but it probably exists in yeah, other yeah, yeah. yeah, it's like, it's very interesting. It's like a breakfast dish where they take, I think it's yeah. like a rice starch slurry and they yeah. make yeah. it, uh, ma yeah, they pour it like on the edges of a wok where it like quickly turns into like a rough noodle-ish thing. And it's like super okay. interesting. Well, like that was that was delicious. That was delicious and uh, like a perfect light morning snack. So like a freshly steamed rice noodle sort of. And then yeah, Hunan food is the the the, the, the fish head, the double fish head with one with red chilies, one with green chilies. That burns my mouth every time I even think about it. And then the, for Shandong, maybe the the Shandong jianbing. Is there like a Shandong variety of jianbing as well? Do I remember that correctly? Yeah. yeah. So yeah, that like, one I like a lot. I guess you got all eight. Yeah. Yes. With the help of my chat. Thank you, guys. You're the best. <sighs> okay. Uh, I'm not going to go very well. Um, for Cantonese, I put siu mai. I like a variety of dumpling. Sichuan, I put kung pao chicken, gong ba ji ding. Um, I put a sweet and sour fish. Can that be? <laughs> yeah. Um, Zhejiang. Yeah. The you know the, when you go to Wai Podia that restaurant and they have those little long jing shrimps you know the the yeah. little totally. is that yeah yeah, um, yeah, yeah. and Hui food I put <laughs> I put An Hui fried rice <laughs> what <laughs> <laughs> An Hui fried rice <laughs> yeah you know famous I don't think this counts. <laughs> Yeah, um, I mean, but like, you know, any I guess out there? Is there an Anhui fried rice? <laughs> I mean, they fry rice in Anhui, I'm sure. I'm um, sure. Yeah, you know, you just put some tofu in there, you know. Yeah. yeah. Um, for Fujian, I put uh, Fuzhou fish balls, um, my favorite thing to eat when I'm in Fuzhou. Oh, yes. Um, so good, huh? Um, Hunan, I have Hunan fried rice. <laughs> <laughs> Except there is a, like a pretty distinctive fried rice, like at least exactly. whenever you're in Shenzhen. What's that? Because they actually have like soy sauce in it, and they put yeah, chilies they, in. they call it soy sauce fried rice. Yeah. Okay. Good point. Um, <laughs> and then for Shandong, I of course put the Shandong jian bing, my favorite jian bing. Mm. Okay. Okay, so, so both of got... you got the point. Oh, <laughs> I 
<laughs> yeah, no, no, because it's like you got to get five. Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah both of you right. got yeah, yeah, the. Yeah. yeah, both of you got the question point. Yeah. Awesome. That was a fun one. That was good. That was. I <laughs> thought I did Chinese food pretty well, but I've just realized that I don't. <laughs> oh shit! I just hit my chat. What do I get my chat? For? <laughs> okay. Let me kind of come back here. Okay. So. The next thing, um, you know, we're doing, okay. I'm, I'm also, I feel a little bit bad, sorry. Um, you know, so this is going to be uh, basically identifying ingredients, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, we've got five different ones. Uh, basically, uh, some of them might be too hard. We'll see, right? Um, you know, basically if you get three of them, right, <laughs> then, uh, then you'll get the point. And I guess we'll just make these two points each, right? In order to make it, uh, what do you call it? Fair between everybody, right? Two points each. Yeah, yeah, we'll birth, anyway. Because, you know, the winner really matters here, you know? <laughs> uh, <laughs> right, so yeah, okay. So basically we'll go through one, just maybe like write down your answer and then, uh, then we'll Jewish. go to the next one, yeah. and then and then, then at the very end, it. then we'll take a look at it. Okay. No, I think we should show each. Uh, I think after each. Each uh, one, we'll one go we'll, for it. Yeah, we'll go. Okay. For okay. It, right? Yeah, that might be a little bit more interesting. I yeah. agree. I'm stupid. Okay, first one. Ah, <laughs> I love that stuff. I love that stuff. Do you know what it is, Endo? Yes. <laughs> You've definitely eaten it before. Yes. Was it, was it at your place? <laughs> Did you make uh, it? Not at our place, no. <laughs> but it's often you eat at many places in China. Yeah, but like it would be, it'd be very likely that it was like in a dish that with something with else. something else, and you mm. might just recognize it as the crunchy green thing, right? It's uh, so underrated and very difficult to find outside of China. I feel. Okay. Yeah, I was surprised that like some places like in the US people are like, oh yeah, no, I can get it at the supermarket. It's like what? <laughs> Crazy. Time oh, I have, All right. have we given um okay. All right. You ready? Mm-hmm. Okay. Three, two, one. Oh. Wilson. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wilson yeah. Talk, yeah. Ah, Celtus, okay. right? In in English. Is it Celtus in English? Yeah. yeah, I mean I think that's how I mean it's pronounced, but what a weird okay. name. Celtus. I think it that's it's one of those things that you always like see written, not like <laughs> Yeah, you never I'm say Celtus. So many things. <laughs> yeah, and actually uh, in, in in funny thing is in the German name for this thing is asparagus lettuce. It does kind of look like salad. Salad. Yeah, yeah, it does look like asparagus like, uh, and lettuce, yeah, right? right? Yeah. 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 So I get maybe it's from the lettuce family. Interesting. Okay, next one. We'll try oh. to be a little bit uh oh, excuse me. Okay, excuse next me. one. Oh. This is one of my favorite ingredients. And I'm so sad that it seems like people can't get it outside of China. It looks guys, like it would be very umami. Would I be <laughs> guessing that? Umami. Um, <laughs> was it, I almost I feel like it originally had yes. umami, but, after but then it, after making it into this, it is not so umami, but it is delicious <laughs> in a different well, way. Well, that doesn't really help me at all. <laughs> oh, okay. So I all right. I think I've seen uh, yeah, we'll try to keep this moving though. Okay, I think, yeah, uh, yeah we're <laughs> we got a couple chat caught caught up with us. So mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we've got more. So why don't we uh, keep moving? Uh, so yeah, three, two, one. Well, I put bamboo. Yeah, dried bamboo. Mm, both of you. <laughs> Um, uh, I don't know. I, we'll, I'll we'll say think. both of you get half points. Right. Oh, okay, that's nice. Yeah. So this is, this is smoked bamboo shoot, right? It's used 
a lot in uh, like Hunan, and it is an awesome ingredient because it like really packs like a punch of smoke. And yeah, like you have it like you know stir fried with like laro, and it it's it's pretty awesome. Um, heavily recommended. I don't know if any of anybody out there has a smoker and likes to smoke things and also has bamboo. Uh, bamboo shoots. <laughs> bamboo shoots, right? You know, give that a go. I have no idea how to make it. Okay, next one. Oh. So, yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, wow. Oh. So oh, uh, you're okay. passing the thing on the left, right? So, okay. you know, the, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right. The thing on the right is, you know, the actual kind of like a like a dish that it's used in. Um, it usually looks mm -hmm. very good by the time you use it. I feel like I know what I it is, know. but I feel like it's too easy. I feel like it's a trick question. Mm, is it a trick question? I think it's not a trick question. It's and I think, yeah. and I think I know what Amy means, though. I, yeah. I I thought it's one thing, and then I looked closer, and now I think it's another thing. Yeah, look closer. The picture does look like one thing. I yeah. I also know what you mean. Yeah, kind okay. of look like one thing, but okay. Go with your gut. The okay. Yeah. My gut is telling me to go with it. Yeah. It's not dry fruit. Yeah, it's not dried fruit. Oh, flippity d. <laughs> yeah. You were gonna say goji berry, didn't you? Yes, I was. I yeah, was. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not goji because the picture does no. kind of look like goji, right? So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That would be. Uh, I was gonna say goji first, but I think it's something else. Yeah. I'm going to my chat. I'm consulting my chat. <laughs> oh, the chat will know. Okay, I know what it is now. So you know. Yes. Okay. Ready. Mm -hmm. Three, Ready. two, one. Fermented red rice. Both got yeah. it. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, like, don't you me, right? That's that's in chasu, right? That stuff. Yeah, yeah, it's like one one version of chasu has it, right? So, yeah, I mean, it's a uh, it's used a lot in Fujian, right? So, yeah, I mean, that's definitely something like I want to explore a little bit more, right? But uh, yeah. Awesome. Right. Okay. Next one. Okay. All right. Oop. Oh, now you gotta. Okay, so this one's a little bit hard to uh, maybe see. Okay, so you're you're again guessing the thing on the left. Um, this thing it's can be used quite a bit. Lots of times you'll see it in like uh, dried or powdered form. Um, mm -hmm. And then the thing on the right is chicken, and it has it. So there's many kinds of this thing chicken. So interesting. This thing, chicken. It's also used in Southeast Asia. Yeah, Australia. particularly in Malaysia. Mm -hmm. Indonesia. Oh yeah, Indonesia a bit too. Yeah. I think they featured this um, this uh, ingredient on MasterChef the other night in Australia. Hmm. Uh, yeah, I mean, um, maybe because it's or maybe I'm completely wrong. <laughs> right. Well, I have a I have two guesses, and I don't know. Yeah, I, I have two guesses, and the chat is like divided between these exact two things. Oh no. Yeah. I think our chat's also divided between those two, too. Okay. Okay. But, yeah. but just a hint the ones that they use a lot in Thailand actually doesn't really look like this, though. So. Oh, that's like a way too easy hint. Yeah. Okay. Now I know what it is. <laughs> I guess now you know what it is. Okay. Well, anyway. All right. Okay. Shall we yeah. reveal? Okay. Well, let's so, let's try. Let's yeah. try. Three, two, one. Oops. Yeah, sand ginger. Yeah, no, not Gringle. <laughs> yeah, sand ginger. Yeah, yeah, but you know, it's sometimes called in English lesser galangal, right? Yeah. But, ah. You know, uh, it's not galangal though. Damn. I I would disagree with somebody that labels it galangal. Yeah, a I lot of people in the chat, know. by the way, are saying turmeric, and I think turmeric, I, I get where that comes from. I think it looks very similar on the outside, but it's very strongly oh. yellow colored. Yeah. yeah. 
And the this is a little bit more wrinkly than this one. Okay, True. last ingredient identification. Okay. okay. For the ingredient. Okay. Yeah. Right. Oh, and then we have five more, right? So sorry about that. Okay, yeah. So this guy. This one's really hard. I didn't even know this one. Really? Um so yeah, this was Okay. Then I'm definitely basically wrong. like, you know, I was saying Steph, like we have to have one that's like really, really hard, right? So uh yeah. This one, I, I would have no idea. The hell is that? So it's like, uh, Steph, why don't you give them a hint? Yeah. I don't know very much about this. Uh, so it's a flower. Um, it's used in ethnic minorities uh, groups in China. Uh, they would use this kind of flower to make the thing on the right. Uh, usually, they will make it during some kind of like festival to celebrate. Yeah, so like the thing on the rice, the thing on the rice. Yeah, the thing on the right is rice. It's colored rice. Uh, so it's not like super clear, I know, right? So yeah, it's like a flower that's used to color this rice. Um, and honestly, I'm I'm forgetting the name of it. So this is this is all you, Steph. Check. Ooh. This is tough. That's a question. Yeah, it's really hard. It's a Anyone flower. In the chat? Uh, yes, this is a flower. I mean, you can if you get the if you know like if any of you in your chat like know like the common name uh, that's like used in China or like people call it, it's fine. Like you don't have to put out like the scientific name because I'm also forgetting that. Okay. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. All right. Ready? Okay. Uh, well, I'm, I'm just going to go with a wild guess from the chat. And I, if that's the right answer, I have no idea. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, yeah. So three, two, one. It's not Osmanthus. <laughs> what? So my, uh, you probably can't really read my handwriting. Uh, somebody in the chat suggested this thing is called Huang Fan Hua, which would just mean it's like yellow rice flower. Basic. Okay, I'm going to give you uh, 0.5 because usually it's called like Zhan Fan Hua, like dyed rice flour. But it uh, might maybe be. Oh, wow. so that some, was... Maybe in some places they call it Huang Fan Hua cause, because because dialects. So. Oh, wow. Actually, yeah. I'm going to cool. give you one. Yeah, 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 yeah. sure. Given how awesome. unfair it is, right? Right. Awesome. <laughs> well, okay. thank you, Yang Lin, from the chat. That was awesome. I thought that was a joke, but it turned out <laughs> you were for real. <laughs> I mean, this is pretty awesome. That this like it's like Anhui fried rice kind of answer, you know. Um. So Andong yeah. got uh, oh four out of five. Got one. Oh, and Amy got like two point five. Yeah. So two point five. Uh, you'll need three to get the quest. The but it's two point five. So let's just do one point for Amy. Two points for Andong. There. Right. Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah because it's two pointer. Yeah. These points are very important. Extremely. <laughs> yeah. How many? So how many did I get in total from you from this round? I think four. Right. Four. And me? Yeah. Uh, I think you got 2.5. Okay, I'll go with that. 2.5 more than I would think. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay, last one. Might be a little bit uh, fairer and more interesting than uh, ingredients is same, same deal, but dishes, okay? So we'll start off with an easy one. Oh, my oh. favorite. Oh. Um, I'm ready. Really? This is the easy one? <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. I'll give you everything goes into the thing in the top left. Um, okay. <laughs> I'm blanking out on this. One. Okay. Um, yeah, well, <laughs> um, I don't know. I'm pa I think I'm passing on this. Oh, this, this is a Chinese dish? Yes. Totally. Right? Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay, I have no idea. Okay. All right, you ready? Yes. What about your Reveal, chat? Reveal, please. Reveal, please. Your, your chat might know. Guo Tiao Mi Xian. 
Oh, of yeah. course, of course. Yeah, okay. go Xiaomi Xian. Yes. My favorite snack from Kunming. It's okay. delicious. Of course, I've had it. Next one. All right. So you guys both lived in the north, right? So like, uh, yeah, it might be a little bit. So basically, yeah, you got these guys on the street that I've only had myself like mediocre versions of this in Shenzhen, right? So, uh, yeah. I don't know. I'm trying to think any. This is this one. I, I believe I've seen this, but uh, no Carol idea. Carol Snow is saying it's not an authentic version. I mean, I, it could be. I, I'm i trying to. Nothing is Because I've only had it in Shenzhen, right? So I was trying to get like good pictures of. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, Ooh, I'm... fortunately, I have some pros in the chat. So, yeah, this is um, it's from Shenyang originally, right? Is that that's it? what I heard? Uh -huh. Yeah, I, I'm sure chat can correct us. Uh, yeah, I'm ready. Okay, I'm ready to two, two, one. Oh, no, yeah. Yeah, the chat for a second. Sorry. Yeah. 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 Kaolong Yeah. Did, did you see? Kaolong Yeah. Okay. I keep Delicious. on trying to like read for your stuff. computer when I'm done. Uh, right. Okay. Next one. Oh, I wish I could eat that. Right. I yeah yeah yeah. Um, Okay. I, I feel like everybody's had this before, but then it's like, oh yeah, what is what's it called, right? Yeah. Right. Mm, so if anybody in the chat, in my chat, knows the name of this, please let me know. I've definitely had this. Made Actually, by a very cute granny on the street. I'm trying to figure out whether that's noodle or potato. <laughs> Noodle potato. Oh, oh, for Kowloon Mian, by the way, somebody guessed New York hot dog, which I think is close enough. <laughs> yeah, you know. Yeah. Yeah, kind of. I mean, anything can be a hot dog. Yeah. Ah, wow. Wow. Guys, you are pros in the chat. You know everything. That's okay. okay. Shall we? Three, two, one. Uh, Lang Ya Tu Do. Yeah. <laughs> well. What, what did you write? Yunnan fries. I just wrote Yunnan fries. <laughs> People knew I this think, in the chat, but. I think Yunnan fries are a bit too generic, mm -hmm. though. It is are there many food. types, though? Are there different types? I think if there are not, if there is only one type of Yunnan fries, Yunnan fries should count. <laughs> but <laughs> no, no, I'm just haggling. fries. I think. But like, do we know? Well, there are like the, the <laughs> flat like... sheet ones, you okay, know, like okay. the chunk ones. Fair enough, fair enough. Mm -hmm. Okay, Yunnan fries doesn't count. It's a category, not, not a dish. Yeah, yeah, you get it right, oh. Amy. Hey, thank you to people in my chat. Um, okay, uh, 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 yeah. Okay, so this one was a really bad picture, okay. <laughs> So like it was really hard to get like a good picture, okay, oh, wow. of this. So I'm gonna like get you like you know seventy percent of the way there, okay. So that's okay. a duck, okay, and that is stuffed with rice and other stuff. So that's what you're looking at, right? Awesome. Yeah. Okay, that is that is. That is difficult. <laughs> it looks like a duck that has had too much fried rice, too much Anhui fried rice. Yeah. <laughs> Slightly clogged digestive system. Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, but fortunately, the pros in the chat. Oh, <laughs> that's amazing. Uh, okay, I think I have it. What's up, dude? Okay. Three. Wait. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Okay, got it, got it, got it. Okay. 
Three, two, one. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> That's amazing. I'm so proud of everyone in the chat. You guys know so much. Next time I'll do research, I'll just live stream my research so you do all the work for me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, yeah. Last one. This one is, this was uh, my turn to have a really difficult, obscure one. We'll see how obscure it is. I don't know. Um, yeah. Oh, I know it. I know it. I don't know it, but I want to eat it. <laughs> That's the correct thing. It was, oh, it's so delicious. Oh, wow. It's <laughs> So my my first like my gut my gut feeling is to say that this is a batura bread filled with steep dumplings. So, right, basically, like uh, the thing you're guessing is the thing on the left, right? But uh, I also included the thing on the right, basically, so that it would be a little bit clearer what this thing was actually being stuffed with. Uh -huh. I, I I only recently discovered this dish on a trip I did at the end of last year. And I ate it every every day that I was in this place. I have guys. I need I need help. I don't know. I think I know where this is from now, but I still don't know what it is. Guys, I need help. This is so. This is so. But I definitely want to eat this. Like, okay, I'll I'll ask you what what the stuff around it is in a second. Like once we have the answer, but. Yeah. Okay. So I think I think I got a pass. I think you can reveal. Okay. All right. Three, two, one. Yo bing bao shao mai. Yeah. All right. Oh, yeah, so, I love it so much. Yeah, in, in Wuhan, yeah. This yeah. this thing I'm I'm think it might even just be like one shop that specializes it. I don't know it's, enough about like food yeah. in Wuhan. There's one like really serious um breakfast street. And they have all of some of the best um, uh, little retailers and vendors that um, sell everything from Ruga Mian to Tang Mian to like everything. And then uh, Yo Bing Bao Shao Mai was something that I'd never had before. And I was like completely transfixed by the concept of stuffing a, <laughs> um, a, a what is it, like a an oil um, right. thing yeah. with um, a Shao Mai. It was like the concept I want. Yeah, one of the things, like the actual, like um, you know, seasoning within the shao mai is also like really good. Um, yeah. I'm not, I'm not sure exactly the seasoning that they put in, but uh, it's some kind of like uh, there's like I think those shiitake something like that, or like shiitake mushroom, and mm. they call it in the shao mai itself in Wuhan. I think they call it zhong you shao mai, which is like heavy oil shao mai, right? So the oil, the shao mai itself is already very juicy and yeah. full flavor, and you pack into this like soft but also crispy, freshly fried bread dough. Yeah, it's one of the things that, like, you know, if you were like, okay, close your eyes, top three things you've eaten in this country, like, I mean, that would almost have to be one of them. I love that stuff. What a concept. It's great thing, great thing, put it together, even better thing. If anyone wants to see more information and see these, um, like, these are... Uh, this food in action, you can watch my Wuhan video on my channel. If anyone wants to- Oh, you have this one on, on your Wuhan video? Yeah, it's when, within the first five minutes of my Wuhan video, I look at some Wuhan breakfast foods and your Bing Bao Shao Mai has a very special mention in there. And I, yeah, drooling over it. So, right, uh, in this round, uh, Andong got three points and Amy got four. So then both of them got two. So then if we tally everybody up for this whole thing. Yeah, the whole thing. Oh, oh, okay. Just kidding. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. There you go. So do I get half a yeah, point for this go. one? I think uh Amy, weren't you keeping score for everybody? So I know that we got six points total, right? Yeah, I have score, everyone's score. So what a, what are our scores for this round for Andong and I? So um you are four. On those three. Four, so four for the whole round? Yeah, for the whole round. Yeah, yeah, the whole. Yeah, yeah, yeah because there's I'm one point each for these. Five points. And then we had one point, two points, right? 
And it's, two points. Yeah, 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 right. It's five points in total, right? So Andong was how many? Sorry, I blanked. But, Andong's three. Uh, three out of five. And then I was... Uh, Four out of five. Okay, so I have the final point check. Um, let's announce uh, the winners of our little trivia. So in, uh, in last place, in last place with four points out of uh, Candice and myself, uh, um, in second place on six points out of 10 is uh, Steph and Chris. And then in first place with seven points out of 10 is Andong. Congratulations. There you go. <laughs> well, well, what do you get for being a winner? We, we should have figured something out, right? A laurel and so my, what is that? What is that? What, what do you call that when somebody gets an Oscar and they do the speech, the thank you speech? So I'm doing that now. I would like to thank my chat, <laughs> my chat for giving me the best answers ever. And I also, I also, I would also like to highlight one thing is that somebody suggested, uh, somebody like captured one of Chris's quotes, which was everything can be a hot dog by Chris. Yeah. And I suggest that should be on Steph's next t-shirt. <laughs> everything can be a hot dog, yeah. Yeah, everything yeah. can be a hot dog. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, you'll need to draw something, you know? Yeah. And uh, as a as a prize, I would like to get a high quality recording of Chris saying "umami," and I will use that as my ringtone. Let me let me try to do like an ASMR kind of ASMR thing. with the dog. <laughs> umami. Oh, oh that's all I needed. <laughs> yeah, man, I can. I'm a happy woman. <laughs> Right. Well, thank you guys so much for um, for coming together and having this session. Can we do it again sometime? I really had a lot of fun. Definitely. Let's do it again sometime. I enjoyed this very much. Yeah. What about you guys, Steph and Chris? You want to do this again? Yeah. 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 We should sure. definitely uh, figure something out now that we have all the logistics sorted. So. Right. Yeah. yeah that was pretty yeah. fun. Uh, yeah. yeah. We, we also really enjoy all these questions, too. Yeah. I, I, for next time, I'm going to make my questions harder. <laughs> it seems like. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We, because we did one before with like on over on Discord. Uh, yeah. And because like everybody like in our community is like really like food nerds. So we're just like, <laughs> go, go out <laughs> there and just make the questions. I really enjoyed your questions. I don't think you have to make <laughs> any easier on my account. I just have to study harder. I think your your <laughs> are perfect. I just need to up my game. <laughs> Right. Yeah, All well, right. unless you guys have any last questions, I might, um, or any questions from the chat, any last questions, um, we might end the stream. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's just see if there are any, if, guys, if you have any last minute questions coming through, um, yeah. you can address them. I just want to uh, mention that my friends at like, Netflix China, they do a live stream every Saturday. They're going live this Saturday and they have some very big guests. So if anyone is interested in checking that out, uh, please do so. Um, I'll put a link in the chat uh, to their upcoming stream. Cool. Uh, okay. I guess no yeah, yeah, sure. You know, I think, uh, yeah, it's probably getting late for some people. And I guess it's. Yeah. Yeah. It's time for Andong to start his day, so, you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The question is, did I stay up long or did I get up early? You will never know. <laughs> With enough coffee, there's no difference. That is true. <laughs> and I've had two during the course of this live stream. So I'm pumped. Nama <laughs> Jidong. All right. All right. Well, Good chatting with you guys. All right. Yeah. Thank, thank you, guys. See you soon. Bye. Bye.